quality or quantity? Which one would you prefer? Publishing two papers in high impact journals or ten papers in predatory journals? This is the question we ask you to a poll on LinkedIn. Shortly, the poll got more than 100,000 views. Around 3,500 people participated and an intense discussion took place in the comments. The results were significantly in favor of quality publications, but we didn't stop here. We decided to validate the poor results through an experimental study to see the unexpected results stay with us. In our previous video, we prepared a nonsense manuscript by putting together random sentences from random journals. We also included some funny names, such as Donald Trump and Catherine Zeta-Jones in the references. We submitted it to a predatory journals and to our surprise, the paper was accepted for publication. In that video, we claimed that publishing in predatory journals would destroy your future career. Don't destroy your skin in such publications. Now, in this video, we intend to test if such publications would really jeopardize your career. In other words, we are seeking an answer to the endless debate about quality versus quantity publications. Specific amount of time and effort can be spent to produce few high-quality papers or many papers of lower quality. We design an experiment to be conducted in Malaysia. Don't you know what an experimental study is? Rose will tell you. In an experimental study, researchers create two groups by manipulating some factors in each. Then, participants are randomly assigned to either group to study the impact of the manipulated factors on the outcome. We prepared a job advertisement for a lecturing position and invented a character named Dr. Ezra Austin who has applied for the vacancy. Let's make a CV for Dr. Ezra then. When did she get her PhD? Three years ago. Teaching experience? Let's assume for five years. Five years in two universities. The PI of a research grant. And she presented a paper in an international conference. We designed two CVs for her. Everything is the same in the two CVs except her publication record. One CV represents Dr. Ezra as a quality researcher who has published only two papers but in the highest impact factor journals of her field. In another one, Dr. Ezra has published 10 papers in low quality predatory journals, though she claimed that they are Scopus indexed. Put it simply, we wanted to compare quality against quantity. We sent each of the CVs randomly to academics in Malaysia. Random, huh? Yeah. I sent the CVs to my LinkedIn network in Malaysia. And I email it to my PhD mates. On a scale of 0 to 10, we ask respondents to indicate to what extent they recommend Dr. Ezra for the job vacancy. None of the participants was aware that there are two sets of CVs for Dr. Ezra. The respondents were 54 academics in Malaysia consisting of 34 males and 21 females. More than 78% of them had the experience of being on an academic recruitment panel. 33% were from public and 67% were from private universities. 55% were assistant professors, 27% were associate professors, and 18% were professors. Among them, 76% reported to have a managerial position such as dean, head of a school, head of research, and so on. We perform an independent sample t-test to compare the quality and quantity application. Surprisingly, we couldn't find any significant difference between these two groups. <laughs> this means that statistically, it doesn't matter whether you publish two papers in high quality impact factor journals or you publish 10 papers in predator index journals. I expected quality to carry more weight than quantity. Yeah, same to me. I didn't expect such results. But how do you explain the results? One of the reasons can be related to university ranking competitions. As we know, one of the important factors in university competition is the number and quality of research publications. And again, we know that quality publication requires massive time and energy. That may lead a lot of researchers to go for predatory journals to achieve fast publications. Yep, and 
This explanation is consistent with the recently published article that rated Malaysia fifth for predatory publications. And perhaps another reason can be neither quality nor quantity alone is sufficient. It means that academia expect researchers to publish a high number of papers in high impact journals. And they're never satisfied. Nothing you do is good enough. Nothing. Yeah, the sample size or sampling approach that we have used may have impacted the results too. What is the situation in your country? Which one is more important? Please share your opinion in the comment box with us. And if you like this video, please press the like button and share this video with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel. Press the subscribe button.